Hey guys, Jules here from Behind the Cork for another What's in Your Glass weekend wine. Uh, this weekend, I wanted to bring you guys something unique, something that you might not see on a regular basis. Uh, however, it's something you should know about. Uh, we'll describe it and get right into it. So what are we talking about today? As you'll see here, orange wine. Uh, what, do you, what is that you say? Well, it's not made from oranges, that's for sure. Uh, it is basically uh, what, wine made from white grapes and fermented with the skin. So typically in a process of winemaking, only the red grapes are produced or red wine is produced by fermenting the uh, uh, grape skins with the grape. That's where it gets its color from. When it comes to white wine, the juice is typically pressed and then fermented. So there's no skin contact with white wine. However, orange wine is... is is becoming more and more popular. There's some great wineries that are producing some really amazing things. Uh, hopefully it'll give you guys some insight on what to expect because it is quite different uh, than regular white wine. Uh, the version I have here is a spectacular, in my opinion, um, from Southbrook Winery in Niagara-on-the-Lake region, Ontario, Canada. Uh, I chose this because it was part of the six pack as well ordered from Southbrook. Uh, if you haven't had a chance to order your six pack, please go online. It's a Cabernet Franc. I talked about it a few weeks ago. Uh, this is no exception. Uh, however, like I said, there's certain things about orange wine you need to know before you delve into it. So uh, let's get it right into it. So at first off, as I explained, uh, white grape skins fermented on the uh, white grapes fermented on the skins. Uh, this, uh, in particular, is 2020 version. Typically, uh, Southbrook produces it from their Vidal grape varieties. Again, follow the grapes. Uh, this particular version is 50% Chardonnay Mousquet and 50% Vidal. So, uh, Chardonnay Mousquet is, I guess, a clone or a, a similar to the Chardonnay grape. However, it has a musky uh, taste kind of an aftertaste. Uh, what I find really great about that grape variety is that it's only grown in the Niagara region and Finger Lakes in Niagara uh, region. If you are from the Ontario uh, region, a quick drive across the border through Buffalo, maybe about an, two hours from Toronto, uh, get into Finger Lakes is probably one of the most amazing wine regions. There's uh, uh, several lakes, I want to say five or six different long lakes, naturally formed lakes that produce some of the really incredible Riesling, Gristraminers, and, and other grape varieties. Uh, fantastic area, but Chardonnay Mousquet is the only two regions. So that's why I really like it. So it's a unique grape you're not going to find in many, many places. However, it has a very distinct taste. So, uh, and, and we'll get right into it here. And the other one is Vidal, which is, is widely planted in Niagara region as well. Uh, so the grape is uh, basically fermented naturally, typically. So with orange wine, the wineries will typically ferment it naturally with the skins. Um, the natural, let the natural yeast take place. Uh, let the conversion of, of the sugars into alcohol take place. It could be anywhere from four days to, you know, I've heard months of letting it just ferment uh, on its skin. It's a natural process, try not to touch it too much. So the the flavors is, is you're going to get that, and it's called orange wine. It's really because of the flavors, it, you get the presence and the smell and the taste of citrusy, so, uh, and, and obviously the color as well, right? Uh, but it, it's, it's, it's really unique in that you'll get this raw uh, taste, yeasty, uh, it's really, I would best describe it as a savory wine. It's going to be slightly sour. So if you don't like, uh, or if some of you, anybody that likes, uh, aperitivo or Aperol or spritz, uh, with the, you know, the, 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 the taste of the, the bit of a sourness in the mouth, uh, you're going to enjoy the orange wine. However, if you don't like that taste, then uh, you're going to struggle a little bit. However, this version is a very subtle version. So maybe start off with this one, uh, is likely readily available at your liquor store. Uh, but that's what you should expect in a orange wine, right? So it's an acquired taste. It's, it's something that is really, you, you, it's, you know, oxidized, you know, we talk about, uh, wine that is just let to sit fermented, you get oxidized, you get really the different flavors, 
uh, and, and you know, it's, it's quite different. As you'll notice as well, I don't know, you can see that there, uh, it's not as filtered, so a little unfiltered as well. So you get some residue and stuff under the bottle. It's not as clear as you can see here, uh, cloudy. So again, the process is left, uh, the, grape, the grapes are left as natural process and let it, it basically lets it do its thing. Uh, however, this here is 11.3% alcohol, so uh, you know, still packs a punch, uh, but again, it comes down to the, the taste, right? So, well, I'll get right into it. So, at first, you know, at first I, I smelled this, the immediate nose that I got was Gramanier, so not as pronounced, but very subtle, if you like Gramanier, the liquor, uh, kind of that orangey flavor. So, I, I, the nose is nice. Uh, then I, you know, you go ahead and taste it. And this is where you get the sourness, lets the mouth water. Acidity is nice. Uh, you get that musky feeling, that raw, that savory. And it's really, you know, on a, on a you know, serve this chilled on a, on a warm day. Uh, it's going to open your appetite, it's gonna just let your taste buds water, right? So it's, and it's, you know, the way I wanna say it, it's very citrusy, it's got grapefruit. Uh, you know, if you like grapefruit, then this is a definite good choice because if you like that sour feeling a little bit, sour citrusy, uh, this is what orange wine is gonna give you. Some are more pronounced than others. Uh, this version is a little more subtle uh, and, and I would say good entry point. Uh, to, to to experimenting or tasting orange wine, right? Um, so really, it's it's you know the uh, listening to the South Brook uh, uh, webpage described this as orange creamsicle. Uh, it's very accurate. Uh, it's really you're gonna get this savory creamsicle taste in it, and and, and if you like that uh, flavor wine, uh, again a little bit of a sourness. Uh, most people, as soon as they taste something sour, it's either yay or nay. So just be aware of that uh, and, and give it a chance. So, you know, pour a few glasses and just give it a chance and see how it goes. In terms of wine pairing for, uh, sorry, food pairing for orange wine, uh, because you're going to get the citrusy, grapefruit, savory, raw, unfiltered, uh, you know, yeasty, uh, what I would likely pair it with is a nice charcuterie board. Obviously, you're going to have the savory uh, meats. You're going to have the cheeses. Uh, anything citrusy is going to go really, really well. If you're going with a full meal dish, then obviously, you know, anything that is savory as well, uh, meat, game, uh, mushroom is going to go really, really well with this. Uh, don't overpower it uh, with, again, grill. I always talk about not overpowering your wine with your food food um but this one i feel it will do really really well with with a lot of the dishes right because of that savoriness and that yeasty and it. it's got that punch too and and obviously anything that has citrus in it this will match really really well we always talk about matching food and wine uh, with the citrus flavors here and grapefruit uh if you would pair this with a uh a citrus uh salad or a citrus based uh, vinaigrette salad, uh, this would go really well because you're matching them together, right? So uh, again, experiment with it. Uh, it's give it a try. I would probably buy just one bottle. This wasn't very expensive, um, probably about $27, $28. Uh, give it a try, buy one bottle, see if you like it. Because uh, like I said, it's, it's uh, usually with people, it's yay or nay, but it's, it's, it's becoming more and more popular. And uh, it's, you know, providing a very unique, uh, look and taste to white grape varieties. Uh, and each winery, uh, produces, uh, those that produce orange wine will do with different grape varieties. Uh, this one in particular is, I like it because it's very unique to the Niagara region. So hopefully you guys like for this weekend. Here's a label, Southbrook Wineries, Skin Fermented. Uh, and that's it. So let me know what you think. Uh, if you like this video, follow, provide comments. So, uh, and that's it. So keep reviewing wines as we move forward. But if you have any suggestions, please drop me a DM as well. Jules here from Behind the Cork for another weekend. What's in your glass? Cheers.